This episode brought to you by Robinhood. Get the most for your retirement. Hey folks, we're starting YouTube memberships. If you want access to emojis, polls, behind the scene videos, and other perks, check out and see if you want to become a member. And we got some Midwest cons coming up. Hope to see you there. Faster than a speeding bullet. I swear that never happens. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. But he can also fly, so it's a tad less impressive when you know that. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! No, I'm not looking up for any of those things. It's Super Month! Yes, it's Super Month! A gimmicky attempt for a YouTube channel to drive up viewership. Super Month! Standing uncomfortably still, making everyone feel awkward. Super Month! Critiquing what's left of the Superman movie so he can pad out another compilation video. Super Month! Who, disguised as nostalgia critic, mild-mannered loser in desperate need of getting laid, fights a never-ending battle to spew, because it's the American way. Let's go back to the beginning of superhero movies. Not that way. While many audiences find themselves growing tired of superhero flicks, there was a time when they weren't even a thing. Sure, there were shows and serials, but a superhero film, at least a serious superhero film, wasn't really a thing until Superman. And even then, superhero flicks didn't really become a genre until Batman over 20 years later. And even then, it kind of took a long time to become a regular thing. Superman really was the OG cinematic superhero. And while I've covered several of the Superman movies in the past, I never have talked about the ones that started it all. So, all throughout March, I'm gonna go over the cinematic Superman movies I haven't covered. Superman 1, 2, and 3, and then finish it off with a special look at the Snyder Cut, which combined might actually be as long as Superman 1, 2, and 3. So let's begin Super Month! Super Month! Wearing clothes so tight you wonder if he rolled up a pair of socks to... Dude, we're good. Let's start with the 1978 classic, Superman the Movie. Words can't explain how excited but also nervous the film industry was about this flick. Remember, superhero films weren't a thing yet, so there's a big push to make this film a spectacle if, say, they missed the window of superheroes' popularity. The biggest stars were named first even if they had less screen time than the lead. Little footage of Superman was shown in case people couldn't take him in that outfit seriously, and they pushed that the effects were so good you will believe a man can fly. Yep, that was a tagline in all the ads, and the ironic thing is, Superman did fly, just not in the way they thought. People loved the movie, not because of the flying effects, which were fine for the time, for the time, but because it captured the essence of this American icon so well, it reminded audiences why superheroes are so important and will never truly go away. It combined both the playful campiness, but also epic size of the character that many still credited as the original blueprint for most superhero films that followed. Including things that geeks like us love to nitpick, but we'll get to that in a bit. The film is still iconic all these years later, and we're gonna check out why. So let's start off, Super Month. Super Month! If he did roll up a pair of socks, why didn't he find a bigger size to tuck in his- We're good! Let's take a look at Superman the Movie. The film sets the tone with an old school intro, making it clear it's gonna harken back to the golden age of comic books, and not be filled with a bunch of dated 70s references. Well, not many. Hey, Jim! Boom! Excuse me. That's a bad outfit! All that's missing is a hat. But at the same time, the titles are like, hell with that noise, here's the real shit you're waiting for. <laughs> Yeah, for 1978, these are some damn impressive intro effects. Their titles have you saying, all right, now I'm okay looking at nothing but text for two minutes. And as I'm sure countless people have pointed out, John Williams' amazing music is one of the few themes that actually sings its title without any lyrics. You hear it, you do too, it's not just me. We're introduced to the planet Krypton, or as some like to say, Krypton. Or the planet Krypton, planet Krypton. I tell you Krypton, leave Krypton. It sounds like they're saying it while eating something bad. Planet Krypton. Though maybe that's from the Krypton accent Marlon Brando has playing Jarrell, which I can only describe as British Canadian? Specific charges herein against the individual. My friends, you know me to be neither rash nor impulsive. Pronounce judgment on those accused. Look, in case people in slinkies, I'm not gonna question their odd ways. They're sending off three criminals led by General Zod, played by Terrence Stamp for trying to overthrow their government. 
chief architect of this intended revolution and author of this insidious plot. All he said was find more votes. On the woman Ursa, whose perversions and unreasoning hatred of all mankind have threatened even the children of the planet Krypton. I still don't know what that means and I'm still afraid to ask what that means. <laughs> You will bow down before me, both you, and then one day, your ass! Your ass? Your ass! See, this is what you get with that Krypton accent. They're banished into a kinda cheap, but also kinda cool effect. But subject change, planet exploding! And I tell you that we must evacuate this planet immediately! I tell you, Krypton is simply shifting its orbit. Krypton warming just isn't a thing. Stop trying to get upvotes on your socials! With the council forbidding him to tell anyone else, jor uses what little he has to get his baby boy off the planet. Have you finished? Nearly. What if you wrap them in color? You know that's outlawed. Only Pillsbury Doughboy clone the dark tinfoil is allowed. Fun fact, though a strange illusion, these suits actually did glow on camera, but not in real life. Which is good. I think this kid would have had nightmares about radioactive sperm people if they did. He'll be odd. Different. He'll be fast. Virtually invulnerable. Honestly, I'm hoping he doesn't enslave them all. You will make my strength your own. See my life through your eyes. For as brief as Brando's scenes are, he does make them count. You really feel the weight of this guy coming to grips with the end of the world, yet having some semblance of hope for his own son, which he now has to say goodbye to. It's a lot of emotions to play, but he really does nail it with a lot of calm, but also heartbreaking dignity. This is all I... all I can send you. Come out. He needs to be changed. Nope, no time, send him out. They launch him in the crystal water chestnut, and for not even 20 minutes, this intro has all the makings of a Wagnerian climax. This feels appropriately large and epic because we've had time to see and feel the relationships built on this planet. I mean, obviously it needs more techno babble and pterodactyls and political Nolan writing and yeah, okay, I'll play nice. <laughs> I still say Krypton is shifting its orbit! Corell is sent to Earth with somehow all his bodily necessities taken care of, as Jarrell passes on basic information for him to survive on Earth. Which Einstein called his theory of relativity, embedded in the crystals before you. Remember, 9-11 was an inside job, Taylor Swift runs the White House, and the moon landing was faked. By us. Ah! What was that? The pod crash lands near a couple called the Kents. Let's hope this kid has a real good sense of humor as an adult. And the couple try to figure out what's to be done with him. Who that boy's proper family is. He hasn't got any. Not around here anyway. Martha, are you thinking what I think you're thinking? We have dinner tonight. For us and the family. But they figure out that meat might be a little rough, so they decide to keep the child and tell no one of his origins or his powers. He grows up into a teen named Clark with a kind of distracting Chris Reeve voice, but honestly, you do get used to it pretty fast, and it does surprisingly blend pretty well. A whole bunch of us are going up to Mary Ellen's. And can't make it. What are you talking about? I just finished stacking all, all that. <laughs> this running effect can look a little silly, but again, for 1978, it's pretty damn impressive. And it is cool that this is the original Superman and Lois Lane. So it is a little odd that that's supposed to be Lois Lane, as the extended cut shows. Oh, <laughs> Lois Lane, you have a writer's gift for invention. I'm glad they cut this as, one, there does not look like there's that much of an age difference between them, and two, if there was, she would be older. How'd you get here so fast? I ran. Clark finds it rough, though, not being able to tell anyone about his special abilities. And there's one thing I do know, son, and that is you are here for a reason. It's not to score touchdowns. We gotta play it cool. Lay low, let everyone think you're normal, and then when the time is right, hold the White House hostage. We've talked about this. In a really well-done death scene, the father falls to his knees and gives one hell of a quivering lip. Oh, no. Jesus, that guy's gonna die. <laughs> and Clark is literally in the dark about it until it's too late. It's a very eerie and heartbreaking moment. And look, I know I said I lay off Man of Steel, and I meant it, but even outside of that, I think most of us can agree there's a little too much over-explaining in superhero films now. Which a part of me gets as for a while they were seen as more kid stuff, and now people see the value in them, but for all the sitting down and talking paragraphs upon paragraphs about how epic their emotions are, I appreciate the simple yet direct emotion of this line. All those powers. 
and I couldn't even save him. That is this film's with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, piss off. So much of what Superman is and isn't, his strengths and weaknesses, what makes him alien but also makes him human, is in that line. Honestly, when I was a kid, my favorite scenes were probably your favorite scenes as a kid. The flying stuff, the epic destruction, the funny lines, action adventure, all that stuff. But as an adult, these moments of Clark quietly thinking over who he is after his father's passing is amazing to me. It is so simple, yet so grand and epic, and it's paced and shot that way. The death of one person who is cherished and loved is just as huge and important as the death of an entire civilization. Mother. I know, son. I know. The perfect word I can use to describe it is Americana. Not cancel whatever you want here. Oh, sorry, boycott again. They're just so different. But simple truths leading to complex emotions. Small words leading to big ideas. Humble beginnings leading to extraordinary futures. Like I said, there's a reason this is the blueprint for a lot of superhero movies. One night, though, Clark hears something calling to him under the barn. Oh, so that's why the cows have six eyes. Clark takes this as a calling and tells his mother he has to go away and find his destiny. Do you know where you're headed? North. Clark, I told you, Santa isn't real. You'll never find him. He makes his way to the Antarctic where he tosses the green rod into the snow. The I'm always legit impressed whenever I see how legit alien anything Kryptonian looks. Like, you've seen giant monsters and weird environments that are done so much, they can kind of be from any sci-fi. But this is so distinct and original, it truly does feel otherworldly. Uses the Kryptonian technology to summon sort of a living recording of his father. Again, kind of an advanced idea for something like this. So my son, speak. If a bad guy came in here and pretended to be me, would you fall for it? Oh my god, yes. Remember, we're species that let our planet blow up. We're not very good at crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Who am I? Your name is Kalel. Years pass as Jarrell tells Clark about who he is. Again, moments like this I found really boring as a kid, but I also knew they were important. Almost like being put in a meditative state and coming out stronger. It establishes an atmosphere of patience and growing, which is what's required for the character. Which Clark certainly does. We finally get our first shot of Superman in the suit flying triumphantly through the air. And then you're stuck with his nerdy identity for 20 minutes. Ken, can you open this? Oh, sure, Mr. White. In any other movie, I'd be really pissed off. But A, that is really funny when you think about it. All this buildup, there he is, here we go, and then this for dozens of minutes. And B, we finally get some levity. Any more at home like you? Uh, not really, no. Christopher Reeve's Clark Kent is just as equally good as his Superman. He is 100% believable, awkward, and funny. Everyone knows the glasses don't hide that much and how tall and built he is. Come on, you can clearly tell this is Superman, but with his acting being that good, I actually can believe nobody would put this together. I guess I must have fainted. Fainted? <laughs> you fainted. Sorry. His subtle change in voice reminds me a lot of Kevin Conroy's subtle change of voice with Bruce Wayne and Batman. Neither sounds like a fake voice, it's just the tiniest little tweaks, yet they sound like entirely different people. There's something I have to tell you. I'm really... Uh, I mean, I, I was, uh, at first, really nervous about tonight. Marco Kidder as Lois Lane is equally entertaining. Especially when you wonder, what the hell is she writing about? Ah, oh, sex maniac profile. Making sense of senseless killing. Here's that story in East Side murder case. Wow, Superman clearly isn't on the clock yet. There's no Z in Brazil. How do you spell massacre? There's only one P in rapist. I kind of love the Superman movie to use that word as the PG-1 not directed by Snyder. That's another reason why they can hold off showing Superman a bit more, because the film's very good at showing why the city needs Superman, but also why Superman needs the city. Clark is very much a farm boy. He has simple values and an old-fashioned way of thinking. Perhaps you could arrange for half my salary to be, to be sent to this address. He sends a check every week to his sweet gray-haired old mother. Actually, she's silver-haired. Lois is very much from the city. She has complex ideas and is also interested in always moving forward. There are very few people left in the world who feel comfortable saying that word. What word? 
swell. Oh, so it's kind of natural. And what makes it so great is that they make it very clear neither one is better than the other. They both demonstrate pros and cons. And while Lois and Clark are very different, they do get along and help each other out. Just like how Superman's very simple yet optimistic demeanor will balance out the city's advanced yet also complicated environment. Superman and the city offset each other perfectly the same way Lois and Clark offset each other perfectly. Also, hi, Richard Donner. Yeah, I also think the extra time is worth it for that blooper. When a helicopter crashes, Clark finally makes his first appearance as Supes, changing in the classic way, changing in this weird ass way. Wait, who are you? I'm Batman. Well, somebody has to talk to Wardrobe. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Hey folks, I'll be playing Final Fantasy VII every Friday on Twitch. I've never played a Final Fantasy game before, so I'm excited to see what they're like. Hope to see you there. Supes makes the round, stopping all sorts of crimes and saving all sorts of kitties. Because of course there's a scene like that in this. Man swooped at his sky and gave him to me. Haven't I told you to stop telling lies? Jesus, you saved the cat, yet you overlooked the child abuse going on inside! The proper party was saved. He even saves Air Force One. And to be fair, that's how Biden thinks planes fly anyway. Do I even need to say why Reeve is the best Superman? On top of being a pitch-perfect Clark Kent, he has both the reassuring smile that everything is gonna be okay, and the intimidating stare that says nothing will stand in his way until things are okay. Even in an outfit as silly as that. Otis, uh, take the gentleman's cape. I don't think he wants me to, Mr. Luthor. He's an authority figure you actually do want to give your authority to because he's earned your trust on every level. Miraculous saving. We've had reports of burglar being up to the mess. Fox News says illegal immigrants stealing jobs from always innocent cops. MSNBC says Superman's color's not gay enough. This leads us to our villain Lex Luthor, played by Gene Hackman, with his bumbling sidekicks Otis, played by Ned Betty, and Miss Tashmacher, played by Valerie Perrine. How do you choose to congratulate the greatest criminal mind of our time? Try twist it. <laughs> So Luther is kind of like Tim Burton's Catwoman, not comic accurate, but still a lot of fun. I do prefer the more menacing takes we've had in other versions, but as egocentric does get a lot of laughs, and when he needs to, he can come across as very menacing. Is that how a warped brain like yours gets its kicks? Planning the death of innocent people? No, by causing the death of innocent people. I have no doubt he meant that. But yes, it is lame that he's not bald, and all because Hackman just didn't want to do it. Hell, Richard Donner had to actually convince him for months just to shave his mustache. This guy is like the anti-method acting. Instead of working around a role, he has the role work around him. But as I mentioned, all the acting in this is pretty good, including the chemistry between Reeve and Kidder. Has he got a family? Where does he live? Oh my god, a super dick pic! So they don't circumcise on Krypton. No, it's an invite to meet up with Superman, as Lois wears what I'm sure she wears to every interview. Must have gone to the O'Neill School of Journalism. And the two flirt like children on a first date. Did you have a girlfriend? No, I don't, but uh, if I did, Miss Lane, you'd be the first to know about it. Ooh. See through anything. Uh, yes, I can. What color underwear am I wearing? Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, something I never noticed till this time around. This movie's really horny. Pink. Vigorous chest massage, mouth to mouth. I won't have one of my men doing anything I wouldn't be prepared to do myself. Do you like pink? 
I like pink very much, Lois. Come out, please! I guess it is a movie about a good-looking guy flying around in tights, but man, sometimes these movies make the Schumacher films look subtle. Why did you kiss me first? I didn't think you'd let me later. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. I sort of have a problem seeing through lead. Oh, that's interesting. Can't see that coming back to bite you in the ass later. Tell me, what's your kryptonite? Oh yeah, it's kryptonite. Ready? Clark. No, I'm not. I said that you're just a... Oh, yeah. Not Clark Kent, by the way. He takes her flying in a scene that's very romantic and also very aerodynamically impossible. And it's a very nice, lovely moment. Until that poem. Can you read my mind? I don't know who you are. Just a friend from another star. I know so many people who absolutely love this scene until it gets to the dumb poem. Here I am, like a kid out of school. I'm a fool. Oh. Now, to her credit, about half of Lois's lines are pretty lame. Do you eat? What? But Kidder's performance often does make them work, and she is trying as hard as she can to make this poem work. Sometimes it's passable, other times... You can see right through me. Can you read my mind? <sighs> it's a poem! What's a poem doing here? Believe it or not, it could be worse. She was originally supposed to sing this. Yep, the lyrics actually match up perfect with William's theme. Marie McGovern even did a cover of it. Can you read my mind? On second thought, maybe the poem's not sounding that bad. If you need a friend... I'm the one to fly to. Meanwhile, the only poem going on in Clark's head is there once was a reporter for Nantucket. You okay? Uh-huh. He drops her off, and she finally thinks of an appropriate name. What a Superman. Superman. I'll call him Black Panther. Lex Luthor, maybe while putting together too quickly that Kryptonite can kill him. But this stuff here will kill, kill him! him puts together a scheme to not only acquire some kryptonite, but also rewire some missiles for his diabolical scheme. And like I said, this movie's pretty horny. Hey, look at that! Woo that dead woman's hot! Her underwear's pink! I like pink very much! This is a romantic conversation we're having here. Otis screws up, though, and their first attempt doesn't work, so... All right, get it right, will you? Okay, when did this turn into a Merry Melodies cartoon? <laughs> Does Luther just have a Bugs Bunny dress ready to put on and say, Oh, howdy, boys! Well, Only one thing alive with less than four legs can hear this frequency, Superman, and that's you. Luther makes a call to Clark on a frequency only he can hear, so Superman... What? ...makes his way to his hideout. It's open, come in. Luther talks about his scheme to have one missile blow up California so he can sell real estate and another missile blow up somewhere else so Superman can't stop both. Now, this is California. I don't need a geography lesson from you. <laughs> uh, where was I? California. Uh, California, right. <laughs> This leads to probably my favorite joke when Otis tries to sneak in a little bit of property for himself. Marina Dalex. Otisburg. Otisburg? Who's this monster guy? She's got her own place, man. Otisburg? I visit Otisburg. I hear the pig's quite good. The missiles are launched as they figure out too late they've been rigged. Though it's really not surprising when you figure out this was the guy in charge. Function negative, sir! They have the new P-20 low-level avoidance systems. Our next president has to be named... Yelnik McWawa. <laughs> Superman, of course, discovers the kryptonite, and he questions if Luther even cares where the other missile is going. I know exactly where he's headed. Hackensack, New Jersey. Eh, that's not bad. I can drown. <laughs> Tessmacher reveals her mother lives in Hackensack, so she frees Superman as long as he agrees to save her first. But you can't just stand there and let millions of innocent people die. Maybe. Ooh, the pot can't approach. Just let him die. Maybe. Okay, I said I would lay off those jokes, but these two should not be so close on the same plane. <laughs> you will sometimes believe a man can fly. Okay, for every corny effect, there's a damn good effect, too. A lot of these moments are really well done and actually kind of damn intense. Well, most of them. Oh, better than my chiropractor. Lois is caught in the middle of it all, though, as this earthquake clearly has it out for her. No, really, once it gets to her car, it stops right in its tracks. I guess God's not a fan of bad punctuation, either. I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. Ah! 
So yeah, this is pretty much a horror film now. For all the corniness this movie has, when it wants to get dramatic, it doesn't hold back. All the little kids in the audience get to watch Lois slowly and horrifically die. <laughs> and Superman's reaction matches that intensity. No, really, it's easy to believe the guy who wrote Godfather wrote this because, man, it just wants you to sit with this death scene. Reeve plays it as serious as if this was a documentary. Like, it's some of the most chilling acting I've ever seen around a death sequence. Silly tights and all. <laughs> No part of this is half effort. He is committed to convincing you he just lost the most important person on the planet to him. <laughs> and then it gets dumb. Yeah, y'all know what's coming. Easily the worst part of the movie, Superman spins the earth in reverse and causes time to move backwards. There's a million reasons why this doesn't work. Some say he could always do it, but then because it would interrupt in human affairs. Well, what, he hasn't already? And what, he couldn't do this a million times before then? In fact, is that really a good ethical code? All those powers that I couldn't save him? Oh wait, I can now! Like, what, so he doesn't have to live with his humanity? But okay, okay, let's say the death of Lois was what gave him the extra adrenaline to do this trick. Like, it's a one-time thing. Did he stop the extra missile? The gas station still blew up and he saved Jimmy from the dam, but the earthquake didn't happen? And let's say he did! Is there just another Superman flying around that stopped that missile? What happens to him? Does he just go up to him and act like, Who are you? Oh, I'm you from a timeline where Lois dies. Oh, is she okay? Well, she is now. Well, what happens to me? Well, you die. There can be only one. It just don't add up! Any way you cut it, there's something that doesn't make sense. But like I said, the rest of this movie is still so good, it doesn't hurt it it gets right back to being likable as hell. You're Clark. You're never around when... Clark? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think Perry White is Wonder Woman! Come on, stop it, please, that's my collateral! Superman drops off Lex Luthor, shows they could have done a pretty convincing bald cap, so it just makes the wigs even more pointless. I just want to see people who look like me on the big screen. And Superman flies into space to look over the world, he threw out the galaxy's alignment, and will probably crash into Mercury one day because of it. But I don't care. This film's still phenomenal. <laughs> yes, there's a couple things that don't work, but not only are they very few, but the stuff that does work set the bar for all future superhero movies. At a time where there really wasn't much of a precedent for this sort of thing, this film really decided to give a lot of drama, a lot of heart, and a lot of dignity while still keeping true to its playful silliness. It's amazing how well this film accomplishes being both light and upbeat, but also heavy and epic at the same time. It's one of the best superhero movies ever made, and if it isn't your all-time favorite, I can assure you, it definitely inspired your all-time favorite. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and Super Month has just begun! Super Month! Able to bitch about the tiniest things any normal person wouldn't care okay, about- Stop! Stop! We're done! Otisburg? We're continuing cameos for charity, and all this month, we're donating to Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Living Beyond Breast Cancer is fulfilling its mission to provide trusted information and a community of support to those impacted by the disease. They offer in-person experiences and on-demand emotional, practical, and evidence-based content that is meaningful to those newly diagnosed, in treatment, post-treatment, and living with metastatic disease. Having done this for over 30 years and having a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a great one to support. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, I hate your face, I don't want a cameo from you, still consider looking at this charity anyway. Whether you donate, volunteer, or just spread the word, you can do a lot in helping this wonderful organization out. So click on the link and give it a look. Thanks so much.